Welcome, my name's Christina, and I'm a part of the team at the Center on Aging at K-State. <clears throat> and I welcome you to my cooking corner. And I've decided to call this Christina's Cooking Corner, not because I'm good at cooking, but because I'm literally in the corner of my kitchen and my name's Christina. So I am currently letting <clears throat> some yeast proof because I'm about to make some pizza dough and I'm very excited because pizza is my favorite food. Um, and as I wait for that, I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing some other things together. So first things first, of course we need some flour, which this is what I mean by not being that great. Some people would be really precise and I'm assuming that if you're a good baker or cook, you would be really precise with this, but I am not. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put two cups of flour in the bowl. Um, and then I will also need the salt, because of course you can't have pizza dough without salt. So now it's a teaspoon that's my timer for my <clears throat> my yeast. Um, so, got my salt, got my flour, um, and I need oil. Um, I just have classic olive oil, which I need three tablespoons of. Okay. And then, go ahead. I don't, unfortunately, have a hand mixer. Well, I have a hand mixer, but I don't have a um, a dough hook. Um, so I am just gonna do this by hand um, and see how it goes. I've made this recipe once before and it's really good. Um, it is a thicker dough um, and I like that because if I wanted a cracker crust, then I would just eat cheese and crackers and not have a nice thick pizza. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and pour my yeast mixture slowly into my flour mixture. And this just takes a second. Went ahead and warmed up my oven just a little bit so that I have a warm place um, to let the dough rise for about an hour. So this recipe actually calls for um, three cups of flour, two cups in, and then one more cup after you've done all that. So like I said, not very precise, but it works. After I've done this and I've mixed it for the most part with this spoon, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it onto my cutting board and go ahead and knead it the rest of the way with my hands. Now I'm not kneading it a ton, I just wanna make sure it's all incorporated. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and move it into that bowl again, but I'm gonna make sure and oil it before I, before I do that. I wanna go ahead and do this until it's nice and smooth and again I'm not saying this is like the right way I don't know much about cooking but this is what I'm having for dinner and I wanted to share with you because I'm really excited about it pizza is my favorite food but I don't actually eat dairy so I have this fake cheese <laughs> this non-dairy cheese and my boyfriend calls it uh, fees for fake cheese we get into many arguments about it because I really like it, but he thinks it tastes like hot glue, or at least has the consistency of it. I personally think it's delicious. It's almost incorporated. I can tell there are still kind of a few lumps and it's still a little sticky, um, but that's okay. It's supposed to be a slightly sticky ball um, once we are done with all that almost done and I am sure there's some sort of technique that I am not doing um, so if I wish there was a way 
for us to interact more because I would love to know your thoughts on how to make some good pizza dough and what your favorite recipes are. But as of right now, that's not a thing. Maybe at some point this will be more interactive. Okay. So now that it's all incorporated, I'm gonna go ahead and take that bowl that I used before and just put some olive oil, coat all of that, then put it in there. Then I flip it around to make sure there's olive oil everywhere. Okay, so now that I've done all that, I'm gonna go ahead and cover this. I, like I said, I already preheated my oven to 200 degrees and then I turned it off just so that I would have a warm uh, space to put this in for an hour. So um, I will check back in with you in a little while. And I'm gonna go ahead and assemble my pizza now. Um, so um, what I did was um, I let the pizza uh, pan heat up in the oven for a little bit. And now um, I'm just assembling everything. Kind of press out the edges. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my cheese and all that stuff on there. I'm going ahead and pressing from the center, pushing on out so that there's just a little bit of a, a nice crust and us. So it's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and assemble that. So the first thing that I'm doing is mm, I'm gonna go ahead and put some pizza sauce on here, but just go ahead and couple, put a couple dollops on there and spread it nice and thin. This is just generic pizza sauce. I'm sure that if I were to make a pizza sauce, it would be quite tasty. Probably make this pizza even better, but I'm going ahead and putting the sauce almost to the outside. So, like I said, this is the fake cheese that I use. Um, I really enjoy it, but I know a lot of people don't really love it. Uh, a lot of people don't like the texture, um, but I personally am a fan. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a layer of that on there. And then I'm gonna put some pepperoni on there too. And then for my boyfriend's side, he's getting real mozzarella. And you don't wanna put that much cheese. I mean, I'm a big fan of cheese, but what I've heard is that you don't wanna put that much on there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put some pepperoni slices on there. And then I'm gonna actually toss a little bit more cheese on top of it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and top everything off with some garlic powder, at least the, especially the crust, just to give it a little bit of flavor. You don't want a bland crust, you know? Then kind of toss a little bit everywhere. And then I'm gonna go ahead and toss a little bit of Parmesan on the ch real cheese side, because everybody loves a little garlic Parmesan crust. So this is what it looks like. Mm-mm-mm-mm, so good. pizza was amazing. It was very delicious. Um, and now I'm actually going to make, um, so I'm not going to make creme brulee, but I had a friend who made some creme brulee and, um, now I'm just going to go ahead and do the final touches. Um, I unfortunately don't have a torch or anything, so I'm going to use the broiler in my oven 
to go ahead and have a nice crispy layer of um, sugar on top. So I'm gonna get that all set up and then I will be right back to show you what I do. So this is the creme brulee. Um, and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, um, I like a nice layer, nice thick layer of sugar. Um, so I'm actually gonna do half a tablespoon of just um, pure granulated sugar and then another half a tablespoon of dark brown sugar. Then I'm gonna go ahead and mix that all up. After I mix it all up, I'm gonna put it in the oven um, on broil. So right now it's going ahead and warming that up. And then once that's mixed up, I just go ahead and pour it on here. Make sure there's a nice even layer everywhere. Put that in the oven for three to five minutes, making sure to check it just because obviously broiling things can <laughs> lead to burnt things really quickly. Um, so I will check back in once it's ready. My creme brulee is out of the oven and it's cooling down now and I am sure that it will be delicious. Um, but thank you for coming along this journey with me, making my delicious pizza and creme brulee, and I'm excited to make more videos in the future, and I hope this was even a little bit entertaining as we all are unfortunately stuck inside, physically distancing from each other, but hopefully not socially distancing. Anyway, I have you in my thoughts, and I will see you very soon, I guess. Goodbye.